Hello everyone, I'm going to present you one of the most ambitious features in SBT of these recent years, and that is SBT Server. Officially, SBT Server is still considered experimental, but it's getting very close to stability, so I encourage you to watch this video and to give SBT Server a try. You will soon know how to benefit from it in three ways. By starting SBT Shell safely and instantaneously, by making the CI of your project faster, and by connecting your ID with SBT for a better integrated experience. And that works with Metals and IntelliJ. So let me start. To understand SBT server, we need to look at some important aspects of SBT itself. SBT is a build tool. Its role is to manage the state of your project. It can compile, test, run, package, deploy, and do many other things with your project. These operations often involve reading and writing files to the disk. Also, SBT is incremental. It caches some intermediate results to the disk in order to use them again later and save some build time. Suppose now that we have two SBT processes running in parallel. If they read and write the same cache files at about the same time, things can go wrong. That could corrupt the state of the build. In other words, Concurrency between two SBT processes in the same project is not supported. This is a problem because sometimes we open SBT in one terminal and sometimes in another terminal terminal. We always have to remember where SBT is running and make sure there is only one running. In particular, your ID runs SBT to import the build, trigger a compilation, or run the test. This could conflict with your SBT shell. Another thing you probably noticed already is that starting SBT can take some time, a few seconds generally. So we don't want to start it over and over again. What we want instead is to load SBT once and for all and to connect multiple clients to the same SBT process. That's exactly what SBT server is, a long-living multi-client SBT process. How does it work? Since SBT 1.4, we have a special command sbt-client. When you use that command, it checks for running SBT server and, if it cannot find one, it starts a background process and connects to it. When you exit the client, the server stays alive, waiting for new clients. You can connect to it again by starting a new client with the same sbt-client command. As you can see, connecting to an existing SBT server is instantaneous. You can also safely create more than one client, they will all connect to the same server. Even your ID can safely connect to it. One important precision is there is only one server per project. But when you work on two projects, you have two distinct servers and that's perfectly fine. In conclusion, using SBT server is faster, you load it once and for all, and it is safer you always have a single instance at any given time. There are different ways for starting and managing SBT server. You can use the SBT bash scripts, you can call the native executable directly, or you can define the SBT, SBT native client variable. All methods are equivalent and you can choose the one you prefer. An important prerequisite is to check that you have installed the official SBT launcher. To do so, you can check the output of SBT version. It should look like this, with the version above 1.4. 1.5 is even better. If you have a different output, you probably need to reinstall SBT by following the instructions for your system on the SBT website. The easiest way for starting SBT server is to, is to type sbt-client, as we've seen before. If the native SBT client does not exist for your OS, you can use the sbt-java client as a fallback. The second method is to call the native executable directly. 
If you go into the folder where SBT in install is installed, you should see three SBTN executables. One for Mac, one for Linux, and one for Windows. For convenience, you can create an SBTN alias in your user profile pointing to the executable of your system. You should then be able to start a client by type typing SBTN. There is no difference between this method and the previous one. It is simply shorter to type SBTN than SBT-client. The last method is to set the environment variable SBT native client to true. That makes SBT server the default mode so that you have to type only SBT to start a client. This is kind of the advanced method, but we will see one case where it is convenient. In this demo, I'm going to show you the basics of using SBT client and server in a real Scala 3 project. So I'm opening a Scala 3 project. There is a build.sbt file inside. I can start the SBT client with the SBTM command. The server was not running, so it is being started. The SBT client behaves exactly like the normal SBT shell. I can run any task. I also have auto completion. So here I can hit the tab button to see all the test classes and choose the one I want to run. After exiting the client, the server is still running in the background. I can connect to it again with the same command SBTN. Connecting to running SBT server is instantaneous. I can also connect a second SBT client. When I run a, ta a task in an SBT client, I can see the task that I can see that the task is running in the other client, and I can even cancel it from the other client. The server will stop itself after being inactive for a certain period of time. I can also ask it to shut down with SBTH shutdown. In this demo, we are going to speed up our CI job. As an example, we'll take this GitHub action definition. This workflow has one job consisting of four SBT steps. That means SBT is loaded four times. We will use SBT server to load it only once and save some time. To do so, we can add Dash client on each step. But this is a bit verbose. A shorter solution is to add the SBT native client environment variable. In this way, SBT will be loaded only once for the entire job. For example, in this for example, it makes the CI of this project 40 seconds faster. We are now going to, to connect metals with LBT server. I have started VS Code in my Scala project. We can see here that the metals plugin has been installed. Metals suggest to import the build, but by default it uses Bloop, which is another build server. And here I want to use LBT server. So I will ignore that prompt by clicking not now. Then I open the command palette to run the metals switch build server command and I choose SBT. Metal is trying to connect to SBT server. Once done, it communicates with SBT to, to extract the structure of the build. We can check in metals doctor that it has connected to SBT and also see 
all the projects that Metals has imported from SBT server. Metals has started an SBT server in the background. I can connect to it in the terminal with the SBTM command. This is fast. Let's now um, edit a file in this web server project. When I will save that file, Metals will ask SBT to compile it. As we can see, there is a compiler error. This error comes from SBT. The same error can be obtained by compiling within the shell. If now I go to the test and add a new test to this test class. When I run the shell in the test, when I run the test in the shell, it's fast because Metals has already triggered the compilation. I can also run the test in Metals directly. The test output here comes from SBT. It's exactly the same as the one we had here. Basically, we are using SBT from within the IDE. And we have a fully integrated experience. It's always consistent and I can quickly switch from my IDE to my shell. We are now going to connect IntelliJ to SBT server. To open an existing project with IntelliJ, we will we'll click project from existing sources. And I will open a project called Scaladex. Here to connect IntelliJ to SBT server, we must choose BSP, which means build server protocol. Here we can see that SBT server is being started. IntelliJ has successfully imported the build from SBT server. Again, we can connect to SBT server in a terminal with SBTN and it's fast. We can, at, at any time, we can also ask IntelliJ to re-import the build. And as you can see, the import is happening in the server. In this video, we have seen how to use SBT client and server as a replacement of the classic SBT shell. It is safer and faster. We have also discovered that we can connect our IDE to SBT server for better integrated experience. I hope you will give SBT server a try. Thank you for watching. Thank you.